So in this video here, I'm going to help you build that conviction. I'm going to talk about a couple of theses that I've created. This is obviously all theory, but it's based on history in some cases, as well as future predictions. And I back up everything I do with as much evidence as I possibly can. Why are you watching my video? If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, smash the like button or something. So let's talk about my first reason why Bitcoin's probably going to go to 100K relatively soon, relatively, I mean, years terms. Okay, not hours. Please, guys, don't be crazy. Um, number one, Macro conditions. Macro conditions are set up to Bitcoin's success. I'm telling you right now, it's never been a better time uh, for Bitcoin to shine. Let me explain the reasons why. There's no secret that the pandemic caused a lot of issues for pretty much every single market on planet Earth. We have massive you know, quarantines. We have people on lockdown. You couldn't go outside. You couldn't spend your money because of this reason. You're doing less activity. Uh, a lot of people migrated online with Zoom and Netflix and all these uh, streaming services. Everybody went online. The economy was pretty much ruined. We all know that. We had and still have massive unemployment. One of the biggest reasons is for people just not being able to go to work because their children have to go to school from home. And this is a consistent threat. Also, we have, if you guys didn't notice, massive inflation. If you look at the consumer price index, it's all the talk of the town pretty much in the last two weeks. Welcome back to Squawk Box. We have breaking news, our April read on consumer price index. And believe me, if you're standing, I recommend you sit down. Up eight tenths of 1% on headline, four times expectations. Strip out the all-important food and energy, up three times expectations, up nine tenths of 1%. Year over year, up 4.2%. And if you look at year over year core, up 3.0. These are staggering numbers. However, they shouldn't be a surprise, especially let's take those year over year numbers. When you look at last April, it was up three tenths year over year headline. So we are comping against some of the worst corona affected year over year inflation data points. So for the next couple months, these year over year numbers are going to be rather large. How large? Yeah, I heard you ask. Up 4.2% would be the biggest month over month increase on headline year over year since September, get this, 2008. These are really, really lofty numbers. Now, as we look at what's going on in interest rates, we're almost at 164 on a 10, 235 on 30s. And do remember yesterday... Massive inflation, which dilutes the purchasing power of the United States dollar, um, pretty much taking money from your bank without you even knowing, right? If, you're, if you have money sitting there not invested, you're pretty much losing money and it's increasing. The inflation is pretty bad. Piggybacking off of what I just said, the cost of goods increased, reducing... Uh, consumer spending. So things have been really hectic in the economy. Not to mention the United States actually experienced two consecutive quarterly declines of the GDP. It even recorded the steepest quarterly drop in economic output on record since they started recording this type of data. Um, a decrease of 9.1% in the second quarter of 2020. And actually it's getting worse in 2021. So to put this into historical context, the quarterly GDP has never experienced a drop greater than 3%. So just understand how significant this is. And if you guys don't know what the GDP means, it's basically gross domestic product, meaning the economic output of our country in general. So the economy is pretty much set for something to come and save it. Um, and this is why Bitcoin was created. It's no secret that Bitcoin's success is actually tied to the destruction of the world currency reserve, which happens to be USD, right? United States dollar. It was actually created for this exact reason. And it's, in my opinion, played its role at least up into the pandemic. Let me show you. So if we come over the screen share here, there's two charts I want to compare it and you'll catch my drift. You'll get what I'm putting down. So right here is the top of Bitcoin's price is the BLX. It's basically the biggest historical data set of Bitcoin on TradingView. I use it a lot. I use a lot of my TA. You guys have seen it before. And then on the right side, we have the United States dollar currency index, which is a representation of the purchasing power of the dollar. When it goes down, it's pretty much them usually printing a fiscal policy or um, anything else that has to do with the destruction of the United States dollar. It could be people fleeting the dollar and not wanting to hold the dollar as well, right? So it's, a, it's usually, though, some type of devaluation of the currency, right? Which the reason why we're talking about USD is because it is the world reserve currency, if that makes sense. But looking at it from here, you could see that it's, it's hold true to what it was. Bitcoin has been hedge against the United States dollar. Let me, let me explain. Ever since over here, I always uh, remember this day, March 20th, 2020, here, around this time frame, we have a massive dip. And this massive dip 
was fueled by the coronavirus pandemic, basically, right? 60% decline in Bitcoin's price. If we look around the same time period, you see kind of this like weird volatility right here. We see this massive decline as well, right? Which is around the same time frame. Pretty much every market bled out. Now, up until that point, it really scared the economy. The policymakers and everything were very defensive because it kind of showed the cracks of economic output and how easy it is to you know, come down. Like the, the house of cards are gonna come down eventually. Ever since that point, we've seen a steady decline in USD. Look at it for yourself. Up until that point, it just continued to fall. And 12% might not sound like a lot, but you have to understand the amount of money. This is an index. The amount of money that's involved hundreds of times greater magnitude than Bitcoin's price. But this recent dip was obviously part of manipulation for some of the whales to accumulate more BTC because the economic conditions are showing otherwise. Every, pretty much everything's showing otherwise. The manipulation is painting a picture that is not the true BTC that we've already thought of. And there's like a common understanding of Bitcoin if you've done any type of research and the information that's going out, it's, it's FUD. It's manipulation. It's random news events that we've already heard of six times, right? With China, we've heard of China more than 10 times, more than 15 times. We've heard of the, the energy argument a lot of times as well. It, it always happens and it comes in cycles. And, and the only people it's tricking is new people. And it looks like the whales are manipulating because as you, as you can see right here, Bitcoin's performing well in the same period of time. Since that exact time, Bitcoin has only appreciated. So it showed clearly that is a hedge. It's better to hold Bitcoin than the United States dollar. Look, the United States dollar is dropping 12%. Bitcoin's appreciating by large percentages, thousands of percentages in the same time period. Um, so it's, it's definitely shown as a hedge against monetary inflation in the United States dollar.